All right, hello. We're going to talk about ideal gas law to, um, at this point. So um, a lot of people get confused originally with the ideal gas law versus the combined gas law, and there really shouldn't be any confusion. The combined gas law assumes, first off, that the amount of gas does not vary. The ideal gas law does not do that. The ideal gas law assumes that you can have a different amount of gas. Also, the combined gas law compares two sets of values. You're going to have two pressures, you're going to have two volumes, you're going to have two temperatures. But the amount of gas does not change. In the ideal gas law, um, we can actually change the amount of gas, but we are also only going to have one pressure and one volume and so forth. Now, granted, in a really evil chemistry teacher could sit here and say, make you use the combined gas law to find some problem and then maybe use the combined ga um, the ideal gas law to figure out the number of moles. So you would have to use a couple of different steps. But um, you hear PIVNERT, PV equals NRT is what we're dealing with here. So P, of course, stands for pressure. Now, it's important to note that pressure has many units, and it is not limited to just these three, but these are pretty typical atmospheres or millimeters of mercury um, or kilopascals. And kilopascals instead of pascals because a pascal is really too small. Do be aware, of course, that a millimeter of mercury is the same thing as a tor. So if you ever see tor, millimeters of mercury, they're the same thing. Volume has to be in liters cannot be in milliliters or anything like that. Now in the combined gas law, it can be because as long as one side is milliliters, the other side is milliliters, the units are gonna to work together. But for ideal gas law, it does need to be completely in liters. Um, the number of moles is N, N is moles. And then R is the ideal gas constant. And you need to look it up. This is actually, if you're taking chemistry here in North Carolina, um, on the very front of your reference tables, there's the gas constants and there's a list of them. And we'll talk about that in just a second. And then finally, the temperature, and it has to be in Kelvins. No exceptions, can't be in Celsius, can't be in Fahrenheit. It's got to be in Kelvins. And of course, um, the formula for that, Kelvins, is you take the, the temperature in Celsius and you add 273, technically 0.15. But a lot of times we just drop the 0.15 because it's not going to make that big a difference in the grand scheme of things. Now, the ideal gas constant has several values. And um, in my face to face classes, I would get you to copy these down. But I did want to take a moment before we get any further and talk about where does these values come from? Um, so if we take the equation PV equals NRT and we're going to solve it for R. So to solve for R, we divide both sides by NT. This gives us this equation here. N, not N, sorry, going too fast. R is equal to PV over NT, okay? So um, I don't know how much you remember or not, but there, there's a set of conditions called STP. And STP is zero degrees Celsius and one atmosphere. Sorry, my screen changed. Uh, zero degrees Celsius and one atmosphere. So let's use those values. Um, and we also know that at STP, one mole of any gas occupies 22.4 liters of space. So using these two values, all these things based around standard temperature and pressure, STP, um, which is not scientifically treated petroleum, which I think was Richard Petty's race car. Um, we have pressure here, if I remember correctly. Uh, we're gonna use atmospheres. So we're gonna use one atmosphere, uh, the volume, we're going to do 22.4 liters because we're going to assume we're dealing with just one mole of the gas. And the temperature is zero degrees Celsius, which if you remember, can't be, it's 273. Now we're trying to determine the actual R value. So I'm going to use the 0.15. I'm going to be a little bit extra just because I can. Okay. Um, and then what we want to do is we want to pull our calculator up. So I'm going to pull a calculator up here and I want to plug these values in. So um, the ones, of course, don't need to be. So really, all we have to do is take 22.4 and divide it by 273.15. And that gives me this number here. Um, now, notice that none of these units cancel. None of them cancel. And so R has a very complex uh, value. It is 0 0.08201. One usually is how it's represented. Um, some places do go 06 instead. Liter atmospheres over mole kelvins. Okay. That's how we found R. That's how R is found. 
Okay, now granted, scientists had to know all these other things in order to figure this out, but this is where R comes from. It's just a constant and it's generated mathematically. Now I can also go in here, uh, let's do this in green and say instead of one atmosphere, I wanna do it in say um, millimeters of mercury. So I changed that to 760 millimeters of mercury, okay? So if I've done that, then let's plug that in. So 760 times 22.4, there's no need to reset everything else up because nothing else changes, it's the same thing. I get this value. Um, so our value here is 62.32. Um, that seems actually a bit on the low side. It's actually 62.4 is what it's supposed to be, but that is liters times millimeters of mercury over mole kelvins, okay? And then um, one last ch ch time for a good measure, let's go burgundy-ish color. Instead of uh, millimeters of mercury atmosphere, let's do kilopascals and kilopascals is 101.325, okay? Because that's standard pressure in kilopascals. Um, so I'm gonna go over to the calculator again and I'm gonna type those numbers in 101.325 times 22.4 divided by 273.15 and that gives me this value here 8.309 8.3093 and that is liters kilopascals over mole kelvins so this is kind of sort of how this is found um these are how these values are found now if you look at the actual values for this you'll see it's 0.8206 um, 62.4, not 62.3, and 8.314. So my numbers are probably a little bit off. My values probably aren't as scientifically precise as what they have, but these are the three values and that's where they come from, essentially. Now, luckily for us, they're just constants. And because they're constants, you look them up. You look them up and use them, okay? So how do we do the ideal gas law? Well, let's go through here. So it's asking, uh, what is the volume? So volume, we do not know. And we're not gonna worry about V1 or V2 because there's only one volume given. Uh, we, we have the benefit of knowing this is an ideal gas law problem. Uh, 0.25 moles. So I'm gonna put a leading zero. I should not have written that problem without a leading zero. That just frustrates me. And moles is lowercase n. And this is oxygen. So we'll put O2 um, because oxygen is O2, it's a gas, um, just in case we need that. Probably don't, but there are some situations where you would. Um, 20 degrees Celsius is the temperature. Um, of course, we wanna convert that to Kelvin. So we add 273 to it, so it's 293. And um, it is kind of weird because you had the 0, 0.0. So should you do the 0.1, then you should round that up to 0.2. Uh, I guess we should put 0.2 technically. Um, and then 740 millimeters of mercury. So this is our new pressure. Um, there's that. So do note, this is three sig figs. This is three, which also gives us four when you add it to the 273. But this as written is only two. So our answer should only have two. Be aware of that. We're looking for volume. So since we only have, we have V, N, T, and P, we're gonna use PV equals NRT. And of course, this is on the reference table, which you don't have to memorize it, but we're looking for V. So to get V by itself, we divide both sides by P, okay? That gives us this. So we're just gonna plug it in. So N is 0 0.250 moles. So what value of R are we gonna use? Well, that's where we go to our reference tables. Um, so we look at the value for pressure. If you look at pressure, and we'll go ahead and put that on the bottom, it's 740 millimeters of mercury. So since this is a millimeters of mercury, let's use the one that has millimeters of mercury. So 62.4 is the R value that we're gonna use. Write out all of your units. I know it's annoying, but it's well worth the practice to get in the habit of it. And then you know that you haven't done anything wrong. And then finally, we have a temperature. So what was our temperature? It was 20, but we wrote out 293.2. And that is in Kelvins. All right, so there's our moles, there's our R value, there's our temperature, there's our pressure, there's our so three things. We did the three plus the unknown. All right, now let's look at the units. So moles is on the bottom here, it's on the top here. So moles cancels. Kelvin's on the bottom, Kelvin's on the top, so Kelvin's cancels. Millimeters of mercury is on the bottom, 
it's on the top here, so that cancels, and that leaves us with liters, which, since we're looking for volume, actually makes a lot of sense. All right, guess what time it is? It's calculator time, so let's pull up a calculator. Got to find that thing. Let me put that there. All righty, so let's plug these numbers in. So 0 0.250 times 62.4 times 293.293. We got a little dyslexic there, sorry. 293.2 times 740. That or my fingers went faster than I, oh, not times. See, I almost goofed up. I divide. It's a great thing about a scientific, I mean, graphing calculator like this, I can change it out and I get this value here. So um, my so my final answer we said earlier has to have two sig figs. So 6.18 becomes 6.2. 6.2 liters is my final answer. And of course, being me, I've solved this out and um, you can see that um, I have that there as an example. So you can kind of see we, we got the exact same math done. Um, it's a little bit hard to write this stuff out on a computer. That's why it's written that way, but you get the idea. Hopefully that helps with that. Um, let me know if it doesn't. <laughs> Don't forget to hit that like and hit the subscribe.